Hello everybody, welcome back to Reaper Minis TV. I've got a bunch of reviews to get to, so we'll jump right in. And we're going to start off with a figure that I think would make an outstanding general for a Wood Elf army in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. You could also drop it in, obviously, to a Temperthil army in Warlord. But this is a Pathfinder Staglord. It's a multiple piece miniature where you get the torso and arms and legs of the figure as a single piece, and then on a metal sprue you get five other pieces. These consist of a cape, a helmet, two horns that come out of the helmet, and a bow that he's holding. The most interesting part of the figure, for me anyway, is the helmet, and it's actually the upper third or half of the guy's head inside the helmet that is going to fit on top of the rest of his head, and it has these two horns or antlers almost that come out of the side of it. The helmet itself, or the skull that he's wearing as a helmet, extends down past his jawline and is the jawline of whatever beast he killed and is wearing as a helmet now. Now with all these parts you're certainly going to have some cleaning and assembly to do. Just clip everything off, clean it up, and you should glue it into place without too much trouble at all. Now if you're not playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle or Warlord, I think you could use him in a fantasy role-playing game as some kind of wood elf hunter. He would be fine as that. I just find it to be a very unique looking wood elf model, or what I'm going to use as a wood elf model. I think he's pretty good. Next up we have another Pathfinder figure, and this is Nakayama Hayato. He's a samurai. It's a three-piece figure, and you get the body and arms and legs and head of the figure, pretty much almost all of the figure, as a single piece by itself. But then you also get a banner on a pole, and you get a couple of weapons on a separate sprue. There's a pole arm and a bow that you'll need to clip off of a metal sprue that they come on. And both of these, the banner and those weapons, are going to attach onto his back. The detail on the armor is wonderful. It's very nicely done. It might look a little intimidating to paint, but a light coat of color and a wash should really make all the individual plates and little bits of his armor stand out nicely. Now, obvious use for this is as an oriental-flavored player character or maybe an enemy in a fantasy role-playing game. I have a whole other use for him. As I've mentioned before, I'm building an all-metal, all-reaper Warriors of Chaos Army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and what I've decided to use for a unit of Chosen are a unit that is all full of Reaper Oriental miniatures. Now, Oriental, whether they're from the Pathfinder line or the regular Dark Heaven Legends line or, or whatever, I'm going to have all of the Chosen as these Oriental kind of heroes or anti-heroes or whatever, and I think as a unit on the battlefield, they will really stand out and look pretty cool. Into the Warlord line for a second, we have a Dark Rhyme Drake, and this is for the Dark Reach faction of Dark Elves for the Warlord game. This is a three-piece miniature, and it comes with a cavalry base. You get the big lizard as a single piece, and it also has molded as part of the lizard the saddle, some extra bits of equipment and armor, and the legs of the rider. The top half of the rider, who's carrying a sword and shield, is a separate piece. The shield is actually another separate piece from the rider itself. This is a female rider, at least to me it looks like a female rider, with the facial features being a little bit sunken in and slight, and I guess maybe you can't tell always with a dark elf or any kind of elf, but anyway, to me it looks like a female rider, and she's wearing heavy plate armor. The lizard itself has a little bit of plate and a little bit of chain armor on, but really not too much. There are some extra bits of pouches and a bedroll that are on the lizard itself, and then the warrior or the rider is just wearing armor and carrying the sword and shield. The figure definitely fits in with the look of the rest of the Dark Reach Dark Elves and that army for Warlord. I don't know if I would drop this into my Warhammer Fantasy Battle Dark Elf army, and that's only because the style of the lizard is significantly different than those that you find in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, or the bulk of them that make up my army. So I don't know if I'd drop it in there, but overall, good Dark Elf on a lizard. And now into the Chronoscope line, we start off with a three-pack of figures that I think has a huge amount of versatility. In this pack, you get three alien invaders. You'll end up with three bodies, which includes the arms and the legs, and then a sprue that has three heads on it. The heads, as far as I can tell, are close enough to being the same to say they're the same. They have the same bulbous and bony head along with the tentacly mouth at the front of it, so close enough to the same, like I said, to be the same. Each one of the bodies has two legs and four arms. The two lower arms are a little bit smaller than the upper arms by the shoulders. They're not small like little bitty baby T-Rex arms, but they are noticeably smaller. 
Each guy is carrying a weapon, or in one of the cases, two weapons. All of the guns that they're carrying are different in appearance, which I thought was kind of unique to where this alien race doesn't have necessarily a standard looking gun across the entire race. As far as uses go, I think you could drop them into any kind of near future or future RPG. You could put them in a superhero game, whether it's a tabletop game, a, a battle game like Pulp City, or into an RPG like Champions. I think there's just a lot of different things you could use these guys for. Now from the video, you can see there was a significant amount of cleaning that's going to be necessary on these guys. There was a, a good deal of metal left over from the casting process, but uh, comes down to maybe a minute or two per figure just cleaning up the mold lines and the extra bits of metal. This next chronoscope figure is called the Lord of the Jungle, and you actually get two figures in the blister. You get the Jungle Lord, or the Tarzan analog, and a chimp, or what I would expect to be his version of Cheetah. Details on both figures were good. There was a little bit of cleaning needed for both also. And this blister, in my mind, is more of one that you kind of need a specific use for before you just pick it up out of the blue. If you're playing a pulp era game, I could see definitely dropping this guy in there as a player character or an NPC or something like that. Maybe, and this might be a stretch, using him as a displaced jungle lord in a superhero game. That's a possibility. Maybe as a barbarian in a D&D &D game, but I think that's maybe even more of a stretch there. So, good all-around figure. I just think that uses might be a little bit limited. Okay, onto the P65 line for a minute. We have two figures here. First one is Sokar's Avatar, and this is a figure you've previously seen in the Warlord Army, the Nefsokar Army. That's the Egyptian-themed army. In the Warlord line, this figure will run about 2250, and then now in the P65 line, it runs about 1050. So you're getting it for less than half the price if you switch over to the P65 line. In my mind, that is a pretty darn good deal considering you're getting about 50% of a discount. It's not really a discount, it's just a different line that has a different metal makeup for the figure. So you're getting it for half the cost of the regular Warlord line of white metal for a more lead-based alloy here. But anyway, the figure comes in three pieces. The two hands are separate and you'll need to glue those into place. I don't really think you need to pin it. There was a little bit of cleanup needed, but really not too much. There were a couple faint mold lines here and there and a little bits of extra metal, but in general it went together pretty easy. Now, obviously, if you're a Warlord and Nefsakar player, you've seen this figure before, and you may already have one in your army, and with it being a unique figure in the Nefsakar army, you're really not going to find or have a use for two of these unless you're proxying it for something else. So I think that the P65 version of this figure lends itself more outside of Warlord than inside Warlord, unless you're just now building a Nefsokar army. So maybe in an Egyptian-themed D&D game or somewhere where you've got desert dwellers or you're exploring pyramids or something like that, the Desert of Desolation series, maybe you're re-imaging that for current edition D&D or Pathfinder or something like that, this could be a good figure for that. I think you could get some mileage out of it in a Tomb King's army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, maybe as a smaller than normal sized bone giant or maybe dropping him into a unit of Ushapti as a special model to stand out and really make that unit look unique. And then the last figure for this episode is going to be a guy called Goldar the Barbarian. It's a single piece figure of, uh, as you'd figure, Barbarian. He's not wearing a whole lot of clothes. He has very heavy boots on and an axe in his left hand, clean shaven head, lots of muscles. And he looks like he'd do fine as any kind of Barbarian, maybe a pit fighter in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay or something like that. But a good meaty barbarian kind of figure. For me, he is going to end up in that Warriors of Chaos army I've been talking about that I'll try to show you within the next couple of episodes. Goldar did need some cleaning. There was an extra bit of metal that goes from the head of his axe down to his leg as part of the casting process. You'll need to carefully trim that away. A couple other little bits here and there and a faint mold line on his sash, but really not a whole lot else other than that. To me, he's one of those figures that could do well as a player character, as an enemy NPC, maybe even a boss-type enemy in a low-level fantasy game. All around pretty good figure. Thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you all next time.